Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna summarize the work we did on our Friday project called Listed. Um, and Listed is an app where users will be able to create, share, and watch lists of YouTube channels. Uh, now we're just starting out on our journey. Last week, we set up the database, we designed the database, we got it set up with Docker, Postgres, and Prisma. And today we were more so focused on the UI. And we started off our day trying to decide if we were going to use Penpot or Figma to design our UI. We had some debates. We also looked at like existing templates. So um, Penpot, uh, Figma, Adobe XD, all of these are tools for like doing design. Um, but specifically with Penpot, they actually have these community libraries like this wireframing kit and user flow. And Figma has a similar thing where you can bring them in and then it's kind of like drag and drop to design the, the UIs. We honestly spent like over an hour <laughs> trying to decide and then we got into it and I was like, this is really slow. Let's actually just write the code. <laughs> so so we, what we also did is we actually, we just drew some boxes. Like we wanted our wireframes to just be very high level. Like we did not want to have color or anything else. We just wanted very high level stuff. So I just drew this out. I was like, this is, we want a landing page. Uh, after the login flow, it's going to take the user to like the creation page, very high level stuff. And then we're like, uh, let's, just, let's just start coding. So to start coding, uh, we actually set up Skeleton. So Skeleton is a Tailwind based UI toolkit for SvelteKit and it gives us lots of cool things. So if you check it out, it has things like buttons and the buttons look nice. Uh, and then things like cards. Um, and then they also have themes. We specifically chose the crimson theme, but they have all kinds of things that you could pick and choose from. Um, and so it's pretty, pretty slick. So we got this installed. We followed their installation guide on getting it set up. We did the manual install because we already had a SvelteKit app. If you're starting from scratch, you technically could use their uh, skeleton CLI to generate the app, but we just did the manual install. We followed everything and we have ourselves a nice little, a nice little app. Um, and then we designed the homepage. Uh, we used Bob Ross Ipsum to give us some filler text. Uh, so we just have some text in here. We have a sign up button. The other thing is we also added a library for icons. Uh, so what did we end up using? Let's look at our, let our, look at our homepage. We ended up using Tabler icons. So uh, Tabler is uh, an icon kit under the MIT license. They have a bunch of icons that you can choose from. And we specifically are using Tabler icons spelt, which allowed us to uh, added and easily get access to components or icon components inside of our app. So we installed it and then we can import those components. So you can see here, we're literally just importing this YouTube component um, and that gives us the icon. We can specify the width, the size, and then that goes right along with the button itself. Uh, while we're looking at the code here, you can also see that we're, we're using some uh, Tailwind classes. So Skeleton is built on top of Tailwind. So you, you also get access to all of the Tailwind classes. So we have like a, a flex container. Uh, we're using like the margin helpers and various things like that. Um, and then we just, we just started implementing things. So today was also a lot about like getting used to Skeleton and, and reading through their docs and how to set things up. Uh, ultimately we found they have this component called App Shell and this basically gives you your, your layout. You have uh, a place to put the header, a place to put the sidebar, your main area. And once you set that up, you can all add everything as slots. So we actually went into our layout file for Svelte, added that shell, and now we have spots where we can plug in all of this stuff. Right now, we just have a main area, but eventually we might want a sidebar or anything else like that. Uh, what else? Yeah, so we did app shell. We went through and we we're trying to find components. We went and used the app bar. We were using buttons uh, and then we, we just built a few pages. So we have this. Uh, right now, we don't have the auth flow implemented. We want to, we're gonna implement that eventually, but we're waiting for the next version of auth.js core to be released. Uh, but for now, we're just mocking stuff out. So you click sign up, eventually there would be some sort of sign-in flow through OAuth, and then uh, we're gonna drop the user on a sign-up page. Now, right now we just have filler text, but basically this is gonna ask the user to set their username. They can choose their existing YouTube avatar or upload a new one, and then we'll give some more description about what you're about to do, and then, then we'll click let's go. Really, today we were figuring out Tailwind, we were figuring out how to use these components, and we're, we're really just gonna get better at it the more of that we use it. I think that's it. Anybody in the chat. Am I missing anything? We, we set up skeleton. We added tailwind. I guess I didn't mention that part of the skeleton setup is to add tailwind to our 
uh, Svelte Kit app, and there's this Svelte Add command where you can easily add uh, Tailwind. Oh yeah, uh, we'll talk about theming. That's a good call. But when I did Svelte Add, it instantly set everything up. So it instantly created our Tailwind config. We had to go in and modify it so that we could use the uh, skeleton themes and stuff like that. But it, it the tel the Svelte Add added all of this stuff for us. We didn't have to do anything manually. Another thing was is using Skeleton, they actually have these variables that can be overridden. And we overrode them because we didn't like the default uh, border radius. So by default, skeleton looks like this. We were like, hey, we, we want you know like less rounded edges. So we found the variables in the, svel in the uh, skeleton docs for what we wanted to override. Uh, and then we found that you could actually use the tailwind variables inside of this file. So instead of like manually saying one RAM or two RAM or whatever else, um, you can see inside of here, I get autocomplete from uh, tailwind for all of the theming options. So if I go in here and say border radius, then I can pick and choose based on the Tailwind design system. So like border radius medium is, or, or small, is a specific amount of rim, but I don't have to use magic numbers anywhere. I can just use the theme, which is pretty nice. And then the other thing is Skeleton also has dark and light themes available. So for any theme that you choose, uh, you can toggle between light and dark theme. Now, brace your eyes, everybody. I'm gonna switch to light mode. Uh, but what's nice is now we have a light mode and a dark mode on our app and I literally didn't have to do anything else. I, I'm just using the crimson theme and uh, Skeleton also provides it burns. <laughs> Skeleton provides this light switch component. Literally all we did was add the light switch and now we instantly can switch between dark and light mode, which is another cool thing. So does autocomplete work if you extend the Tailwind config? I don't know. So I, I am like, this is kind of the, my first foray into using Tailwind in a big application. So we'll, we'll see. I, I know there are things you can add to the Tailwind config. So it, it would be interesting if you get autocomplete in there as well. All right, I think, that, I think that's everything that we did. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, definitely check out the playlist that's linked in the description where you can see the full stream where I was working on all of this stuff. And uh, also you can check out what we did last time and hopefully you tune in next time. So we're, we're doing this every Friday. So next Friday, we're actually gonna focus on figuring out internationalization. So right now we just have filler text, but we wanna get internationalization set up so we can have like an English dictionary where we're pulling this text from the dictionaries and then eventually we'll be able to uh, translate it into other languages, but we at least want to get that going. And hopefully the next version of Auth.js is, is released so we can try implementing and actually adding Auth to this app. All right, I think that's, I think that's it. Thank you for watching and, and I hope to see you in the Twitch chat.